Hello my lovely vloggers, this is Patty Bula here, the vlogging grandmother. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel in which I discuss, well I give grandmotherly advice and this channel is everything to do with life. I also show my um, TV chat show in which I discuss successes and failures with people from all walks of life and also I share my music on this channel and I hope you would want to be one of my vloggies and if you do I hope you do just hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell as well so you'd be notified when my vlogs are scheduled to be on YouTube Today I want to talk about courtship. I already started this series there. I now have vlogs about dating. I don't know, part one, part two, part three, part hundred. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But today I want to talk about courtship. Most people think that courtship is an old fashioned word, but no, I don't agree because you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We try to invent the wheel all the time, but our grandmothers, grandparents, for generations went through this and quite successfully. Courtship leads to marriage, okay? So you start dating, then you court someone, and then it leads to marriage, God willing, a good marriage. But this is why I'm here. You see, marriage is a union that is, that is not without its difficulties and disciplines. So I want to share 10 things. Is it 10? Yeah. <laughs> you know, with you today to lighten up the loads of the difficulties and, you know, the messy thing that comes with marriage during courtship, which to me is the most important, it really is the most important period, you know, that you go through before you end up with marriage, uh, proposal, etc. Because this is when respect and certain unwritten rules are actually set. They are established as a foundation, okay, for both you and your partner. These rules and understandings between you would lead to a happier and more fulfilling, enjoyable, wholesome life in your marriage. So courtship is the period of getting to know each other, getting to know what the other person is like, getting to know how you yourself feel about them and how you react to them. You see, in my book, courtship usually involves the elders. When I say the elders, these are people who would normally act as mediators. You see, I believe in life there's always a trinity, okay? So if you're going out with someone, your mother, for instance, might see something about them that you cannot see. They might have a feeling that, that you cannot feel and if they like them, fantastic. But they should also be able to say to you, I don't think you should do that yet. I don't think you should, they should be able to tell you that. Anyway, I'll come to that later. You see, without the mediators, I have noticed that um, in modern times, those old fashioned things of having mediators like in england you had old dowagers you know and you know people like that just leads to divide and rule mentality from both the female and the male when you start developing divide and rule control comes in this leads to abuse and even rape during the marriage and of course it ends up in a messy and nasty divorce and, and unhappiness for children. So this is why I say that courtship is very important. I don't know about you, but you know, there's so many divorces. It is nasty. I've seen people who divorce, it's painful. You have just wasted how many years of your life and something you could have planned. Okay, we spend so much planning businesses and holidays yes if you say plan your life people think holidays and they think pension and then you know what happens you end up in old people's home being looked after by people who don't really care about you seriously emotionally they're just there because they paid to look after you and then you end up with empty memories with strangers and lonely we can avoid that that didn't happen what a hundred years ago 
So why do we have it now? Because we do not invest in relationships, in our marriage, okay? In, in television, we watch films that tells us we should be entitled. So if we're entitled, what about the partner? Surely he's entitled too. This is one thing that I find strange about entitlement. Everybody's entitled. Of course we are. If you're going to be entitled, I'm entitled. If you're entitled to happiness, I'm entitled to happiness. So where, where, do we, where, do we, where do we meet in the middle? This is where courtship comes in. You know, I, to me, I think of it as if you want a balanced marriage and life, the three things that you have to have, three things to me, inquiring mind, inquiring mind, okay? Because you're meeting, this person is a stranger. You may love them, you may be attracted, attracted to them, they are, he is a stranger or she is a stranger. So it's good for you to be inquiring about things to do with her. Look for little signs of things that you can or cannot live with or cannot put up with. Number two, obedient will to God and the elders. To me, that is so important. God created you and God created your partner. So why do you leave him out of the equation? He's a mediator in my marriage. God is right in the middle between my husband and me. He holds, he's the glue that holds everything together. If there are things I cannot solve for myself, I turn to him and pray. You'd be amazed miraculously. He solves it. It's incredible. And then number three, you have to have a loving heart. If you have a loving heart, you're lovable. Don't fool yourself saying, oh, everybody loves me. Excuse me. You need to know that you have a loving heart. You give unconditionally. And I'm not saying you should be a fool in love. Oh, oh no, far from it. Far from it. But these are the three things I think that you should have, you know, for a balanced marriage and balanced life. I just, I love courtship. <laughs> I love the period of courtship. It's it can be painful. You know that time when you you want to see the person but you think, oh, maybe I should hold back a bit and you can't bear it when you're not with them. It's a time of love letters, not now. I don't know what you guys do now. What is it, texts or is it, um, I don't know. But that was a time of love letters, love, love letters, flowers, you know, oh, courtship is a brilliant time. It's a time of discovery and it's wonderful. You discover and cherish things about your partner. Hopefully when he proposes, you're ready to say, you don't have to ask the answer, it's yes. I mean, don't be silly about it. Because I, I notice girls are in love with the idea of marriage and the blancmange dress and the big party. Think, because it's not just about that. Think, I have seen so many big weddings, they spend a lot of money and as soon as the wedding is over, I, literally, I'm thinking, I think these two should start planning divorce. They spend so much on it. The man, I usually find the man is more committed than the girl. She's committed to the big dress and I don't know what else she's committed to. But girls, you're wrecking your life. You've wasted. You've wasted your life. You have one life. Do you know, every day is precious. Every year is precious. Every week is precious. Then you spend 10 years bitter or you spend five years sleeping with the enemy and then you're bitter about the enemy and then your life and then you get lines on your face and then you become a miserable bitch and then you bitch about everyone this is what happens i have seen it happen so prevent that by having a good courtship have a mediator someone who loves you who will tell you the truth very important so many young people now when they're courting each other they dismiss their parents. They dismiss this. Why? Because you want to have fun. Honey, let me tell you something about life. You have fun today, you pay tomorrow. There's no such thing as a free lunch. I can tell you that. Put in the work now. Put in the work now. And I tell you, you will come out the other side thinking, wow. But you have fun now. Open your legs too easily. Whatever it is you want to do, you will pay. You will pay. There's no such thing as I said. 
as a free lunch seriously life is too precious think of your life your the life that you're given is full of oh wow look how beautifully you're made don't throw it away don't trash don't trash it do not allow your relationship to become stagnant girls don't give away too much of yourself not too soon you should be an enigma there's a mystique about you and it should always be there i, I mean 44 years my husband and i and i promise you he's probably still being surprised by me <laughs> i don't know if it's in a good way or a bad way but he's constantly being surprised and it's wonderful you know you, you're kind of constantly i think that's what men, men think oh i can't work out a woman but that's good that's good because you want him to keep discovering things about you okay let me give you an example in case you think she doesn't know what she's talking about when you go and visit a website you want to buy it promises oh it's full of promises okay and you go and everything is on the first page there's nowhere else to go and you look you, you go to the next page it's almost the same it's words or that you go oof, you move on yeah that's what we do in relationships you move on but if that page imagine you go into this page full of promises okay you go into the first page second page third page well, hey you just keep going you can't wait to come back and then next time you come back they've got something exciting for you to discover tell me you wouldn't stay with that page go on be honest that's what happens with marriage and courtship because that's what you are a website a web page give little at a time little at a time let them just keep discovering 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 let him discover I'm telling you he wouldn't go anywhere else <laughs> you will be it that's my advice what well, that you know all my life that's what I've done that's kind of the strategy I have tried to build my husband might not agree with me but he's been with me this long Hey, hey, so I must have done something right. Also, think about what I've just said. Really, please take a good look at what I've just said and the comparison because you, you really want to be exciting. You don't want to boring, you know, in every aspect of life, keep something back. I used to hear young people say, oh, um, we shouldn't have a secret between each other. Oh, you, that's, that's just stupid stupid there isn't a single person in this life who hasn't got even if it's the tiniest secret and that secret actually makes you an exciting person you are boring if you don't have any secrets promise I promise you you're boring if you don't have any secrets so don't fall into that thing you read in books oh well we don't keep secrets from each other and that shock <gasps> she kept a secret from me oh get a life look into your own life you will see that you have a secret as well guys so that is stop that nonsense people and build a good life for marriage come on this is grandma here your mother won't tell you she probably been telling you and you weren't listening grandma here is telling you this okay put god in the middle ladies and you guys too seriously if there's something you kind of look at the person let me give you a secret when my husband and I well then when we were courting I prayed a lot I prayed a lot I hope he won't mind me saying this but he was married twice before and he had children how do I cope with this I need help help me is he a good man show me is he really the man that I think he is show me please prove it to me I am not a mind reader help me here and then when I got well I, I felt that the Lord had helped me and showed me that I've got a good man here never mind being married twice or not then I thought okay I need an earthly mediator my mother I was grown up enough to make up my mind according to the Western world but I was still a child 
I still had a mother who was alive. She was very strict. So don't think I had one of those mothers who, oh, my mommy is my best friend. We go clubbing together. What? No. My mother's one of this smack, 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 any nonsense. And I love that. I know you guys don't. I love that because it kept me on the straight and narrow. Look where I am. Happy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am blissfully happy. I have an incredible partner. Do you know why? Because these are the things I did. I wasn't selfish about it. It wasn't exclude his family, exclude my family. That is a recipe for disaster from day one. I can tell you that. And the process of having God and a mediator never fails. I can assure you that. And your romance will be enriched. Your marriage and your rom romance, whoa, enriched and enjoyable for years. If you follow my advice and pray, seriously, put God in the middle of your relationship. Finally, what I want to tell you is, do not separate yourself from your elders. Do not separate yourself from your elders. It is a stupid woman or a stupid girl who allows other people to tell her that her mother is this or her mother is that. Come on! If you're that stupid to let somebody turn you against your family, is their family perfect? Honey, I can tell you, no. So do not allow somebody to tell you about your own family. Because what they're doing is taking you from your family so they can have total control over you. If he cannot accept your family, he cannot accept you eventually. Perhaps all he wants is to use you and dump you. Because if he accepts your family, you've got a good man there. Take it from me. If he accepts your family, and don't trash your family in front of your partner. You're trashing yourself. Come on, you know what I mean. That's your family. What makes you so different? Have you ever realized by the time you get older, you'll be thinking, when did I become like my mother? Oh yeah, because that is your family. So don't trash them. You've just trashed yourself and ruined yourself in a potential man who could be your best friend. Don't do that, girls, please. You see, your, your mother will challenge your choice of actions during your courtship. That is good. Don't think that she's, oh, what a bitch, she doesn't want me to be happy. Oh, come on, girl. She gave birth to you. She wants you to be happy. But she's watching you like a train crash heading for a barrier with no tracks. So, really, think. If your mother loves you, oh, heaven knows. I've seen some mothers now that I really wouldn't take advice from. But you know in your heart, if your mother loves you and wants the best for you, she is the one to go to. But I tell you, courtship is wonderful. It is wonderful. It's romance. It's what you read in, you know, your, I don't know, romantic novels, but sometimes in the wrong way. Think of Enid Blyton. She's not, not Enid Blyton. What? Oh gosh. Princess Diana's um, godmother or stepmother, <laughs> Barbara Cartland. Think of her. She, read her books. Bit old fashioned, but she had chivalry she had courtship she had oh yes read those books forget these modern books that's just taking you in the wrong direction and the more miserable you are the happier they are forget that find yourself a love life that is blissful go and read those books and then read the bible for guidance that's the book of life i'm not a bible basher but i'm telling you what worked for me my marriage, in, in the middle of my marriage is God. When my husband, who was married twice, as I mentioned, we couldn't get married in the Catholic Church because I'm a Catholic. My husband was a Catholic, he didn't know it at the time. He was born a Catholic, but he was married twice before. And I wanted desperately to be married in church. As I told you, I put God right in the middle. I prayed, fasted for 10 years. It took God 10 years to answer my prayers. I'm not complaining. Because when he answers prayers, he does it in a big way. <laughs> because I tell you, we got special dispensation to get married in the Catholic Church from Pope John Paul, now Saint John Paul. And guess who officiated our Catholic wedding? Canon Davis, Monsignor Reynolds, and Bishop Howard Tripp. Come on! 
No one could have done that for me except Almighty God. He's blessed me. Fasting is good too. You know, I'm very cheeky like that. I put in fast so he will hear me. He's got so many children, billions of them. He has to hit here Patty. So I have my appointment every Friday with him. And I fast, the hunger keeps me dead on him. When my stomach grumbles, I think of God. <laughs> That's funny. But he's answered my, my, my prayers. So this is why I'm sharing this with you. Take care, guys. Be happy, okay? And God love you all. And I love you too, because that's why I'm telling you all this. I want you to be happy. No divorces, just blissful marriages for the future. Take care, my vloggies. Love you. Mwah.